Okay, so if I take a look at this tutorial, so now uh, G code, uh, simply here N1 to N3, this is simply line number. Some of the software may have it, but some of, many software do not have this N1, N2. So this is line number, ignore that. And then all the code is simply made out of G17 or T1, S19, G54, M8, G something. Also, uh, you probably can recognize that what does the X number, Y number, G number is. Actually, this one is coordinate. So what it means is it will simply, so this one is simply representing Y two point coordinate, X two point. So you can actually either X, Y, Z independently, or you can combine them together, X is something, Y something, G something, or together. And what you see here, G01, G41, G is all the related, G is actually a motion, meaning that uh, G0, G54, uh, let's say, if there is any, uh, oh, I, I would rather find another one, G code reference. Okay. So here, uh, Wikipedia is, it looks actually more cleaner. So here, if I just go down, okay, so let's take a look at about G01. G00 is rapid positioning. Simply G00 means that it'll just go there no special meaning. So normally G00 is uh, kind of frequently used to move to the zero or origin location. And G01 means linear interpolation. So it goes straight, that does simply that means. And then G02, circular interpolation clockwise. So G0, if you see something G02, it will move clockwise in form of circular. And then G04, and so simply G or related means is, oh, simply move there, that's mean, that's it. And then another type of command, what you are going to see is M type command. So M is related to definitely motor. So M00, stop. 01 is optional stop. M02, end of program. And the M03, turn on a motor, which is turn on a spindle. And then you probably saw M is simply turn on, turn off, or move faster, slow, that's it. And another type of thing. So if you see that G20, G9, G50 is simply move somewhere in the kind of default location, that's it. And then if you kind of see something F related, this one is controlling how fast the rotation is moving. And then G00, Z1.1 is simply move vertically to 1.1 location. So this one is actually very, very low level programming. You even don't want to be bothered about it. So that's why we use Vcarp Pro software. It can, so it's kind of the same thing that you prefer to use Python and all other C type languages or assembly language is computed or generated by programming interpreter. So our VCARB is a kind of interpreter that transform our DXF code to so-called CNC machine code, that's it. But um, if you actually want to develop your own 3D printer or your own creative use of CNC machine, then you may want to involve with uh, this kind of G code. And this is one of my example. Uh, let's just see. If you go to, if you go to my uh, website, I have a kind of a, a kind of, I have a variety of project. So for example, this, this is actually a 3D printer I made by myself. And at this time, I actually attached my own 3D printer extruder. And the movement of this clay 3D printing was not invented at that time. So there was no commercial software. So only ways I write down my own G code and let my 3D printer move out. And then this one is actually my weaving 
machine uh, that kind of weaving sculpture also made out of CNC. And then actually the movement of all these wires, there is no commercial software or open source software that you can use actually. So I have to, uh, I have to make my own interpreting software. At that time I used Rhino Python and that generated Z code and CNC machine followed the Z code of this. And many, and this is one of the result. And then actually we have a lot of robot arms and actually we use robot arm as a 3D printer or other tools. And at the time also there's no software that generate the, in a way that you want to use And actually robot arm is also using Z code too. So that's kind of a way of doing it. Okay. So now, um, if you actually, so now if you will have 01 dog bones CNC dot NC code or Z code and 02 cutting dot NC code or Z code. And finally, what we are going to do, we open, open a uh, shop bot three. Then we'll continue. And this, whether you see that this one is actually controlling shop bot. And I can, if you have a machine connected to your software, you can control it. But this time you can only have this one. And then if you simply cut pot, it will ask you to, okay, I just, I can simply use it. So if you, if it is connected, you can, all you have to do is you can just click cut pot and then simply run it and that's it. It's just kind of as simple as you come with an SD card with save the G code and go to 3D printer, put it and just play button to run a 3D printer. And pretty much that's it. If I, if I can show you this uh, one kind of, I have a kind of pre-recorded tutorial. So this is kind of a, is it mine? No, not mine. Uh, I'm finding my own tutorial. Uh, Okay, so this is Shabbat. You can search with Shabbat 360 ER. Uh, this one is actually our makerspace tutorial of explaining 3D CNC. Uh, if you're coming here and then if you have a, so this is our setting in our lab, uh, it'll be fun. So actually, if you wear a kind of like a VR headset on your uh, head, or you can borrow a headset from our lab, uh, this one explains the process. And, it, and if you wear it, actually, actually, you can, um, you can really see all the process as if you are in this makerspace. You, you, can you see that my moving angles? So what this one is that uh, this, the first, actually there are many, many process that we are have to go through in terms of hardware. So I will explain about how to set the origin position. And then I need to explain how to set the zero position, zero height location of a material. And that is a kind of automatic process too. So you are going to use uh, this aluminum plate or metal plate connected to its machine. 
And then you are simply locating this aluminum plate on top of your material. And there's a sensor of this CNC machine. Then as, as soon as it touches the aluminum plate, then actually it will calculate, it will calculate, it will compute the precise location of the zero location of a material. Uh, by, by, the, by removing the thick, by computing, calculating uh, the thickness of that metal plate. And then after that, uh, all you have to do is you simply click uh, the cut part button to upload the NC code. And then you just press enter, enter multiple times more, then it will move out, it will cut out the material. So it will be uh, quite easy. I'm trying to show you how to cut it. So this one I'll probably cover about once our uh, kind of like a Makerspace education will be started. The on-tech uh, policy will be finished next week. Okay, uh, that's pretty much that's it. Okay. So, do you have any questions about here? So it's relatively very easy. Uh, so you will have no problem. Okay. So this is the this is one is something that I have to cover last week, and then today. I'm switching to another cutting. So far, so as I explained it, this one is called the CNC uh, 2D cutting, or we can say 2.5D cutting. So what I mean by 2D cutting is to simply cut out this panel as kind of as a simply on a side way. And 2.5D cutting is actually CNC furniture that you are creating 3D object out of 2D cut material. That's called 2.5D because basically all the material is prepared by 2D. However, by assembling them on an orthogonal way or assembling them, uh, this is kind of like the basic principle, like kind of flat pack furniture that you cut out of all the kind of 3D shape material out of 2D thing. But now that's not the only way to use a CNC. Uh, we can actually use 3D CNC. We can actually cut CNC in a 3D way. And one of the great example, great, uh, one, one of many example is my project, which is I try to cut uh, a cello body using CNC machine. Uh, one of the main reason is, have you ever seen cello uh, carving? So to make a cello, a highly experienced, at least many, many years of training, uh, they need to cut uh, the back panel and the front panel of solid wood. manually like this, <laughs> basically. And actually this will take uh, several weeks to several months. And every time they cut out uh, the back panel of it, uh, what they're doing is they kind of measure the curvature and also additional process is each this. So the person who made a musical instrument is called Luthier. And luthier need to measure the thickness of each uh, position. Well, let me see if there is any uh, video of that. So, uh, cello carving, uh, measuring uh, thickness. So to measure the thickness of front and back panel, they use this kind of sh uh, shape tool. And then this one is the contour of back panel and front panel, meaning that uh, very specifically, the cello's back panel and front, front panel have different thickness. Uh, this one is the showing 
uh, some examples of thickness. So the center is, I don't know whether you can see it clearly, is about 6.8 millimeters. So, and then top area is a slim three millimeter and the edge area is 2.4 and 2.7. So all locations are, all, all positions in a back panel or front panel, they all have different thickness and even they are not symmetrical. I don't know why at all, but this is how cello was made from, uh, from 17th, 18th century, like by, so this one is very interesting research area to me that using this technique to make a very beautifully sounding instrument. So what I did was, um, if you go to, uh, I actually made a, a kind of like fractured version, small version of cello back panel uh, using CNC. Uh, so this is actually CNC carved a cello base. And then the way how it is made is actually I use a CNC machine to cut out like this. And then to do something like this, you first, you need a three dimensional object from Rhino. And then also you are going to in export it to vCarb Pro and vCarb will generate NC code out of using 3D geometry. So that's what I'm explaining. And then you can actually, but something when you think of, and then uh, the one of the main purpose of doing this one uh, in post is actually making a soft robot, soft robot molding and casting. So the one of the latest robotic project in research area, such as nature robotics, they, people are, people try to make robot, it look like animals or fish or snake or something like strange or deep sea fishy like animals. And then to make a robot like this, you need to make a mold and then you're going to use a silicon resin to produce this kind of soft robot, robotics. And this is one of the things that if you're interested, you can go, you can go this way. And then to make this kind of, so something you need to remember is that uh, we are going to use 3D CNC. So you need to take care about positive shape and negative shape things that you need to think about. So let's say CNC, positive and negative shape. So what is positive and what is negative shape is that, okay, so this is, uh, let's see, okay, negative cutting. Uh, any good? Example or form. Okay, so here is a kind of good example. Uh, so basically when we use molding and casting, uh, the assumption is that quite many things can be take out after casting for one direction only. So negative positive shape simply represent this kind of concave shape that material can come out easily. And negative shape is actually inverse to one. So such as like this, let me see this one. So this undercut, or this one is called a negative cutting, meaning that negative cutting create a kind of holding or kind of keeping position. And by doing so, your mold 
cannot come out. And then this is the same issue with CNC. The CNC, always the drill bit of a CNC positioned on a vertical way, and there's no way to cut on a negative shape either. But, but the, the problem is, how can we design some part that has both upside and downside? So this is something you need to think about when you design your 3D form. So for example, uh, I'm actually waiting for this one is changed. Okay, so as you, there is a, let's say, this is kind of like a small toy project. So what you do is when you make a spear, the upper part of spear will be positive shape like this mic, but you cannot really make the, the other side of spear because the other side of spear, you need an undercut and this one become a negative shape of it. So what you can do is you have to split them into half and then unfold it and you need to make them all positive shape kind of form to make it. So that's something you need to think about it. And this one, what you are going to see, this green piece is two side molding or casting. But the, your first project this weekend is not really double side casting. That what we are going to do is actually single side casting. And single, single side casting is simply something very simple like this shell like thing. So there's only one shape of it and then you simply take it out and that's it. And the reason why we are going to do is the coming week, we are going to use, what we are going to use is a vacuum machine that, vacuum forming machine that we are going to use. So vacuum forming machine is, look, is, does look like this. And then we are going to simply make a mold and then we place so this is the this one oh the, actually there's another interesting one so let's say that uh we are going to use we are going to cut a, a wood using cnc in form of 3d cutting and then we place the cut it form inside of this vacuum machine. And then we are going to place a very thin acrylic sheet and then we will heat up the acrylic sheet and press down using vacuum suction. And by doing so, we can deform this very thin acrylic sheet, follow the cutted uh, CNC mold. And by doing so, we can create a kind of three dimensional and very thin material and that is the base of or uh, this kind of cup or packaging or many other form of 3d model making so we'll heat up this material And actually we are going to use the same machine, but our machine is slightly smaller than this. So something you need to be careful in designing CNC machine and CNC machine works quite well uh, with this vacuum machine. 3D access CNC works quite well with this vacuum machine because 
3D CNC only can cut vertically and it cannot really create a kind of down cutting or undercutting. So it naturally works well. However, uh, as you kind of recognize from all these uh, vacuum forming, uh, you need to think of actually if uh, I would recommend for you to make that something kind of shallow because that something shallow shape make you easily take out. But if you have this kind of long model, uh, there are kind of many problems will happen because if it is this long, they kind of have kind of a long object and imagine that the, that this kind of aluminum, the acrylic shit, when it deforms, it will create a kind of, de kind of crease like this because their deformation requires a lot of much amount of deformation. So uh, something you need to consider is that the base materials start with something very flat and this flat will become to three dimensional shape. So please kind of, you need to consider that this kind of deformation uh, can be easily done or can minimize any additional deformation such as this kind of, imagine that this is very flat mask form. However, to create, this is start from very flat. However, this one is deformed. Imagine that my mouse and nose is a kind of mold and when it created, where is the problem happen? Actually, my nose create a lot of problem because this one has a lot of curvature inside. So when you design that, please think about it and try to design something simple. And when we do that, uh, and then the rest will, I will continue next week. But if I kind of show something simple process, you have, many other ways to design this kind of 3D. However, the start point, and then actually the shape, I, my recommendation start from something as small as uh, zero, about 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. So simple start like this. And there are two different ways of, so this one, we switch our notion of 3D modeling from solid modeling to surface modeling. And there are two different types of surface modeling. So let's imagine that one is, so let's say that this, uh, can you see the surface? So this surface, if I try to rebuild, then actually you can decrease or increase point count, meaning that how many control points in this surface. So now you have 10 by 10 grid control surface. And if you go to here, um, uh, this one is fillet curve, no fillet curve. Uh, I just kind of make it a little bit larger. So now, okay, there are two different things. One is show curve edit on, and the other one is show object control point. So if I click this one, now you see that you can see all the control point. And then if you see from perspective, when I click a point and I move it up on a side view, and now you see that the control point is moved on. And now I kind of creating a 3D surface out of it. So this is one simple way. Then this one is widely used when you create a terrain, a land model, or kind of a, a wave, or a kind of like something simple surface, but a lot of a different form. And another type of form making is actually like a car design. Can you imagine how car designers make a 3D car? And then you probably see a lot of uh, actually kind of interesting intersection of coming inside and outside. Uh, that is known as patched. So what they mean by patched is that uh, this one will take a long time, but I'd like to simply show how to do that. 
basically you create something simple triangle or something but what kind of any shape that you can create something simple and the process is the same that using control point on and then you move one corner at a time so now you see that or oh, i this i try this one too and select a point and i move it too so now you see that a kind of deformed 3d shape out of it i actually this one's supposed to be surface so i change it to uh, planar curves so now you set this one surface and this one is so this one is a little bit tricky. Uh, so now when you have actually this curved one, if it is triangle, so that, that's why you see a lot of triangles in car design because uh, basically a triangle defines a flat surface. But this one is actually four curves. One way of using it is you can actually create surface from three or four corner points and you can create a, surface like one, also you can create another surface like this. Oh, sorry, one more time. So now you have this kind of tri, so this one is known as triangulation, meaning the surface can be three-dimensional form out of 3D triangulated form. So you probably see this kind of back with triangle kind of this one is one of the easy way so now you probably see how this come create a three-dimensional shape out of a lot of many many triangles and then if you see any um anatomy 3d file 3d angulation you probably see that all the kind of three-dimensional geometry that 3d model to build a human form is actually also triangulation too. And this is another version, instead of triangle, yes, it is also possible using of quadrilateral lines. And then to do that, uh, as you see here at the bottom case, it, this is not really triangle. Instead, this one actually made out of uh, quadrilateral lines. And actually to do that, what you can do is when you have some, uh, any kind of four lines so let's say we have this one i first of all i explode it to make individual four segment so now this one is independent four segment and then what you can do is you can use network surface network surface is a way of making surface out of uh, many curves and i select these four curves and enter then it automatically create a kind of network but of course there is a kind of approximation there will be some deformed deformation because this is kind of creating approximate surface not exact surface and if you press ok then now you see this kind of surface is created so this is one way of making it so my suggestion when you do this kind of three kind of 3d cnc do something very simple so something extremely simple such as uh, i don't know something like ball <laughs> because i believe that not the technique but i think you are kind of this is your start point so do something very simple one uh, is my suggestion okay so I will kind of explain more detail what you make uh, on this Wednesday. All right. Any questions so far about today's class? Oh, uh, 네, 말해 보세요. 네, 그 저번 주에 휴강을 해 주시고 나서 자, 잠깐만. 아직도 소리가 너무 작게 들린다. 네, 한번 말해 
혹시 지금은 좀 들, 들리실까요? 아, 예, 네, 잘좀 들려요. 네. 아, 그 저번 주에 메일로 휴강에 대해서 말씀해 주시고 나서 네. 영상을 유튜 영상을 올려 주신다고 메일에 보내 주셨었는데 유튜브 확인을 해 보니까 영상이 추가적으로 따로 올라온 건 없어서 혹시 아, 아 그래서 숙제 듀 때문에 그런가요? 네, 아, 아니요. 그 영상 그 저희가 휴강 했 어떤 날짜에 다른 했던 거를 영상 올려주신다고 하셨는데 그걸... 아그 제가 곧 올려줄게요 제가 지금 그거 할 정신이 좀 아니었는데 so, uh, so all this week's assignment because of the cancelled class last week will be all delayed one week and then I will upload my tutorial as quickly as possible I'm so sorry for that <웃음> 네 미안해요 <웃음> 네 바로 올려줄게요 네 우리 그때 뭐 했지 아 네네네 네. 네, 혹시 또 다른 질문? 아, 그 여러분, 아, 네, 네, 그러니까 여러분 뷰 같은 거 이거 너무 신경 쓰지 마세요. 아, 저는 그런 거잘 신경 안 써요. 네. 그냥 학기 말까지 있기만 하면 다 돼요. So yeah, so you guys, please don't be stressed about due date. I don't care that much, but uh, just just upload it before the end of the semester. That's it. But uh, but in two weeks, 바로 이주 되면. 우리 바로 이제 실습 들어가거든요. 근데 실습 들어갈 땐 여러분 파일이 있어야 돼. So we are going to really make your own model. So be prepared that you have everything so you can build your own model. That's it. 네. 혹시 또 다른 질문 있을까요? Okay, then that's it for today. All right. So have a good day. Thank you. Bye.